My name is Sana Ling from Wuhan University. Uh, the, yeah, uh, the topic today is uh, Wuhan's Red Steel City, the winning centrality of, uh, of an industrial satellite town. Uh, this is a work collaborated with Zhu Miao and uh, Zhigang Li. Uh, this is the outline of uh, my presentation. Uh, first is the introduction. And uh, we, uh, for this research, we uh, tell the story of Wuhan Iron and Steel Company, uh, which we call it uh, WISCO, as a historical example of per peripheral centrality with a continuing legacy. Uh, this is a map shows the central uh, district of Wuhan. I think uh, everybody knows Wuhan very well now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm not, uh, this is, uh, Wuhan is a central, uh, is, a, is a, one of the largest metropolis uh, located in the central China. And uh, the, the orange or the brown uh, here shows the location of a WISCO. Uh, we can see this is uh, in uh, the, uh, in Qingshan district uh, in the, used to be a west suburb of Wuhan. And uh, to further analyze uh, the Wuhan's ex spatial expansion from 1950s, we can see here uh, where uh, Qingshan is, was almost empty, uh, just a farmland in 1950. And just in 1970, it starts to build, uh, has this Wisco uh, and Qingshan district turned out uh, to be here. And uh, gradually after decades of development, we can see uh, Wisco has been absorbed uh, as many other suburbs into the uh, Wuhan urban fabric. And, but we think uh, the, this uh, red steel city has retained some uh, distinctiveness and centrality within urban life and affairs within Wuhan. So does it remain uh, more than the typical uh, industrial suburb uh, depicted in the literature? Um, we did some uh, literature review uh, uh, we, uh, we found that uh, uh, many uh, research uh, mostly focus on the residential suburb, uh, particularly uh, dep depicted uh, a poor inner city and uh, affluent, uh, affluent suburb uh, binary. Uh, but scholars also uh, ask to uh, emphasize the importance of the industrial suburbs. We can see, uh, for example, Louis uh, 1999 uh, summarized uh, four types of uh, industrial suburbs. Uh, they are uh, informally created uh, manufacturing complexes, uh, self-contained satellite towns, uh, company town suburbs, and organized industrial districts. But most of these research are generally uh, uh, like uh, study their distinctiveness lay in the jobs residence balance, a measure of self-containment and development of social institutions. A uh, few studies used the historical perspective to understand the the uh, peripheral centrality of these uh, industrial uh, suburbs. So for WISCO, uh, first as an urban perif periphery, um, WISCO had uh, centrality as a result of combining two of these at its formation in the 1950s. It was uh, both a satellite and a single company town uh, because it is a self-contained uh, uh, satellite uh, town in terms of uh, residence, employment, and services, and also administratively. And also it is a single major vertically integrated steel company. Uh, but it also was an example of perif peripheral centrality in other uniquely ideological uh, respects. I think we, uh, we are familiar with China. Uh, the China has a very uh, a unique uh, Danwei uh, system. Uh, there has uh, numerous Danwei, uh, a work unit of China, uh, were perhaps the most complete examples of neighborhood level political ideological shaping of society that, uh, that uh, the social spatial uh, of China is organized by Danwei and it's still very central to, to China. Uh, and as an urban periphery, uh, WISCO was central to Mao's national uh, objectives of industrialization uh, because uh, WISCO was established at, uh, in 1950s uh, in the uh, first five year plan uh, of China. Uh, it uh, was one of the 156 uh, key projects uh, to develop the heavy industry. And it is uh, also a relay for international relations and technology transfer. So these two uh, come together 
in the name of a uh, steel city uh, or red steel city given to the district of Wuhan, Qingshan, occupied uh, by RISCO. Uh, so this is a larger map of uh, Qingshan. We can see the, the, the factory, the works of uh, RISCO over here. And uh, uh, we'll list some of the physical and economic self-containment has vanished as WISCO was absorbed into Wuhan in more recent decades, but we still found uh, uh, it, it has some um, imprints uh, of, uh, the, in the city. First, uh, for the planning authorities have struggled to integrate it into metropolitan spatial planning efforts. And WISCO as a Dan Wei, uh, has continued to exert its own effects on the production of the built environment. And uh, last but not the least, the place identity of the Red Steel City lives on in the attachment and imagination of the residents and non-residents. Uh, we will explain these three points later in the empirical part. So the methods, we basically uh, use the qualitative uh, uh, me uh, method to uh, to this research, uh, we have uh, two uh, sources of data. Uh, first uh, source of data come from the uh, oral history interviews with uh, uh, more than 30 uh, current and former WISCO employees, uh, as well as archival research. Uh, and the, uh, we already published two uh, papers uh, on this, uh, based on this data source. We also did additional interviews with uh, urban planners uh, to place WISCO and the Qingshan district in past and contemporary planning efforts to understand the, the peripheral centrality relations. So uh, first, uh, we can see uh, WISCO is established, was established uh, centrali centrally at the peripheral of Wuhan. Uh, it has a very important national, uh, it has a national importance and uh, autonomy. Uh, it was built in 1954, and uh, when it was built, uh, the Qingshan uh, was uh, chose the, as the site because it uh, was close uh, location to uh, Huangshi, which has uh, the, the iron uh, the, had availability of iron mines. And also, we can see that the, this area is along the Yangtze River. So uh, at the beginning, the entire district of Qingshan was originally allocated to this uh, state company. And also, uh, Wisco's uh, Red Iron City and the layout of the iron and the steelworks uh, was built with assistance uh, from Soviet uh, metallurgists, uh, engineers, and urban planners. Uh, we can see from the uh, from, we can see the photo here. It was taken in 1955. Uh, all the Soviet experts and uh, experts from all around China are uh, taking photo together over here. And on the right. Uh, was a photo taken in 1958. Uh, it was um, Ch Chairman Mao uh, uh, who came to uh, Qingshan and witnessed uh, the first blast of furnace, uh, refined the first furnace, hot metal. So we can see its uh, national importance and autonomy. And uh, it shows centrality also uh, due to its self-contained community. So um, from uh, the map on the left, we can see uh, uh, the, the, there's a line in between, and uh, on the east side, it mainly uh, for the for the works, for the for the steel iron steel works, uh, for the industry development, and uh, on the on the west, we can see the part is mainly for the living area, and uh, the, the they have housing, have healthcare, have schools, um, all the, all the supporting infrastructures has been uh, built to to to. to uh, uh, to uh, accompany this uh, this industrial development, so uh, this is a very unique uh, uh, downway system, and uh, the the photos on the right shows uh, the the right uh, the red iron city. And this is a living the one of the oldest living area for the workers of uh, Wisco. We can see this uh, this uh, this place was designed um, was was used a Soviet style of residential planning, and if you uh, Overview from the above, you can see the layout shows a uh, Chinese character, uh, xi, uh, which means happy. So uh, uh, the bottom photo shows the real of picture of this place. And we can see this is uh, a style uh, combined a Soviet Union planning style with Chinese uh, characters, characteristics. And uh, it shows centrality also due to its brand and recognition. Uh, a whistle became 
uh, one of the most sought after employer in Hubei province from the 1970s until the 1990s. Uh, the reason, as we were told, was not only because of the salary level, but also the all-around welfare support and holiday bonus. Uh, many interviews, uh, interviewees told us, and we have uh, used one of the uh, script here. Uh, one of the interviewees, uh, uh, his, uh, his former uh, uh, Wisconsin told us, uh, Wisconsin in the 1960s and 1970s was a really a big state-owned company I feel very proud to say I am from Wisco to outsiders. It gave me face. Uh, also, you know, at that time, you need an introduction letter to do anything outside your downway. So a letter from Wisco with the national heading could have facilitated our visits, especially in Beijing. So our salary was also relatively high in Wuhan at that time, plus various welfare support, such as free healthcare, children care, and training. Everyone in Wuhan wanted to enter Wisco, and every girl in Wuhan was eager to marry to a Wisco boy. So we can see that he's, uh, he's really proud of being a Wisconsin. And this shows old uh, pictures of a Wisco. Uh, they uh, play, there's a huge uh, basketball court and they're playing basketball games. And also this is a gate ball uh, court uh, inside uh, the, the, the Red Iron City, uh, the, the retires people can play over here. Um, but uh, since uh, two, uh, early 2000s, particularly after the financial crisis, 2008 financial crisis, crisis uh, there has been a lot of changes uh, for WISCO. It, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, analyzed in the, our another paper, uh, you can see the first it lost in open market competition due to product quality, work efficiency, and a huge social welfare burden. Uh, also, it, it was due to its ambitious uh, ambition and uh, it's some risky going abroad investment strategy. Uh, also, it, it was lack of strategic and transparent development plans as one of you know one of the largest uh, state-owned company. So, uh, as well as the oversupply of steel and iron sought out China and internationally. So finally, uh, Wisco was taken over by Shanghai uh, Baoshan Iron and Steel Company in September 2016. Uh, since uh, this, uh, as uh, uh, said by one of the planner we interviewed, um, as he said, the whole district of Qingshan has been suffering since Wisco went downhill. So does uh, this change uh, lead to winning of its centrality? Uh, we put a, a question mark here. Uh, uh, we, uh, we found uh, if we look at the planning uh, history, we can see uh, because uh, this is a centrally owned and a state owned uh, uh, com uh, company. So it has very high institutional hierarchy and uh, has a, a lot of land ownership uh, in uh, Qingshan. Uh, so, so uh, Wisco uh, is hard uh, to uh, to to move or to redevelop. So we uh, from uh, interview from uh, with a planner, he, he told us that more or more recently, uh, we do see Wisco is more cooperative with uh, provincial city planning bureaus in integrating its land usage and its fresh infrastructure with surrounding areas. But when Wisco was prosperous, city planners had to negotiate with it for infrastructure access and planning cooperation with the rest of the city. Uh, for one thing, uh, Wisco was planned as self-contained entity, so not much uh, in outflows happening. For the other, Wisco mainly relied on harbor and river transport, so it was less concerned for highways. So it has difficulty to integrate uh, Wisco into the city uh, in terms of planning. And also it um, has a strong imprint uh, in terms of production of the built environment. Uh, first, uh, Wisco has its own real estate development, uh, uh, construction management enterprises. Uh, its main factories uh, still cover 30% of Qingshan's land area, and over 70% 70, 70 of Qingshan residences are related for this downway. And 127 uh, residential compounds have iron in their name. So as well, also there has legacies of pollution, a dirtiness and a working class neighborhood have impeded the regeneration process and outcome of the district in more recent years. 
uh, as uh, one reflected by one of the planner, uh, he said um, other districts of Wuhan have been developing very fast recently with land finance, but not in Qingshan. Uh, for one thing, it doesn't have much land left as majority of Wisco dormitories are low rise with small and segregated public spaces. For the other, not many people want to buy houses in Qingshan because it's a poor environment and urban amenities. Um, and it is also difficult to uh, relocate the manufacturing factory out of Qingshan. And um, the planners actually think it's too sensitive, too sensitive to talk about it because it's the you know the state uh, strategy for this uh, factory, but not the they uh, they can't say anything about it. So uh, Wisco is a state owned uh, company, so all of its pre uh, generation employees enjoy a lifelong social security. If you locate WISCO, you have to bring and sell to all these employees. Uh, this will be very costly and hard to negotiate as hardly anyone want to live further away from uh, the center of Wuhan. So uh, this is the perspective uh, of production of the built environment. Uh, last but not least, uh, from the perspective of attachment and imagination, uh, this is also uh, uh, show, uh, showed in our other paper, uh, shows a lingered half memory of the industrialization. We can see um, there is still a us uh, and them divide, the people from uh, Wisco from Qingshan and people outside uh, Qingshan, they have a very strong divide between each other. And also the retired Wisconsinis uh, retained uh, their vivid life work memory of this Dan Wei. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Wuhan's residences still associate Qingshan uh, with Wisco. With, with and um, uh, the interviewees told us they doesn't want to move uh, out of uh, Qingshan. Uh, they, uh, uh, even the after generations, people are still want to live in Qingshan. So uh, moreover, there, this is a uh, this uh, attachment and imagination also reinforced by the conserved Wisco factory and the retaining of the red steel city. So as one of the newest uh, uh, plan or, or the, 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 the slogan of, of this Qingshan district is uh, clear waters, uh, green mountains and a red steel city. So we can see the red steel city is still one of the name card of uh, this place. And uh, this slogan is also a pr uh, you know applauded by uh, President Xi Jinping uh, who went to Qingshan uh, in recent years and uh, uh, so we can see the attachment and the imagination of this place is very strong. And uh, here's some photos um, uh, which we can see the, 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 the red, uh, you know, the red steel city is still over here. Even the new uh, regeneration um, uh, plan for this place is to keep uh, the original, uh, you know, the red blocks housing. And one of the red, uh, newly built, uh, Place. They have uh, rebuilt one of the original schools uh, here on the uh, right top map. Here, you can see this is the already built, the one already built, uh, uh, right close, very cl uh, right close to the red brick, the, the, the red, uh, the original red steel city. The um, it is a creative uh, center and also serves as the market center of uh, the overseas Chinese town holding company. So they also show how they go into reserve the breaks, uh, things like that. Um, so finally, coming to our discussion and conclusion, uh, this is uh, just a very preliminary research uh, result. Uh, we found uh, uh, because existing studies uh, have a little uh, has uh, given not much in attention to the changing centrality of Danways, uh, particularly those industrial suburbs, despite uh, this being the main urban form in China until recently. And uh, we um, had the chance to trace uh, one of the most representative Danways. And our uh, uh, preliminary conclusion is that uh, Danway or this industrial suburb may not be dead. It shows a linger centrality. Uh, they still have a real and imagined imprint on urban society in terms of uh, planning, production, built environment, attachment, and imagination. And I think it's um, largely due to its uh, historical heritage and also its uh, institutional hierarchy. But uh, there might also an open uh, for discussion 
is there will be a winning centrality a matter of time uh, because we already see that there's a, there is a population aging uh, problems in these places and uh, uh, if you look at the, the industrial suburb in northeastern China there shows uh, some uh, shrinkage of these industrial suburbs uh, and also the Qingshan and Wisco uh, itself seems like they are seeking for integration to the urban fabric uh, more into into the urban fabric. For example, Wisco recently agreed to give its uh, 2.5 uh, square kilometers as an experimental field for industrial transformation uh, to the city, and also uh, many uh, several planned roads. Uh, so several plan roads are uh, planned to go through Wisco, uh, which is not has been done before. But uh, all these are just in plan. Uh, the the planners told us uh, the uh, Wisco they don't have anything to say. But the Wisco or, or even the, the the central state have uh, uh, have uh, have they say can decide this. So future research maybe it's good to link uh, Wisco with industrial suburbs in the northeastern China and industrial uh, ghost towns in the Western literature. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Senan. Uh, before I go on, there is a request that you put one particular slide back up of the old and the new housing, uh, because Paul wants it for propaganda on Twitter. Thank you very much. Um, I, my, uh, before I, I hand it over to Walter, I just wanted to make the observation uh, that I was thinking again about the centrality uh, the peripheral centrality of a town like Gary, Indiana, uh, which may or not uh, jive with what Walter had to say on, on Indiana. Uh, but also, of course, um, you know, in the River Rouge plant or, or Dearborn, these kinds of places, as we know, you know, the um, old Henry hated the inner city, so he built his plants out there in the suburbs of Detroit. Um, and then now they have a completely different uh, feel to them. But perhaps also what I was reminded of is this, this slogan that we heard about the clear waters and blue skies reminds me a lot of uh, a slogan in the 1960s in Germany, in West Germany, in the Ruhr area, where the social democratic um, provincial government uh, wanted to uh, um, clear the sky over the industrial Ruhr. And they called it, the slogan was blue skies over the Ruhr. And it was exactly that sort of uh, emphatic movement forward out of the industrial area. And now, of course, we have the International Building Exhibition with a lot of experiments of housing, not just like the ones uh, that I saw in this paper. Uh, thank you, Sainan, for presenting and to the co-authors who were not able to be with us in this particular moment. I hope that Julie finds a way back into the discussion before we end this today. Walter. I just wanted to congratulate the writers. This was really very exciting in multiple aspects, especially about the oral histories of industrial suburbs. I, I'm eager to read more of their work and see the new directions over the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments and questions? I'm sure there are. There are already things going on in the chat. Nick? Hi, sorry to um, raise my hand again and, and, and chip in. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit, I've got some of my grubby fingerprints on some of this uh, work um, from past papers. Um, I mean, the thing that, that occurred to me is, you know, we think of uh, historic cities as being these authentic places. They've acquired authenticity over great long periods of time. Uh, and, and part of that is the memory that's invested in, in, in these places. And yet what we see in this instance is, you know, an extremely um, authentic place or a place that's acquired great authenticity um, with people's memories really strongly attached to them, uh, you know, uh, in a relatively short period of time. And of course, it's a suburb as well. So it's not just central historic uh, city cores that have this measure of authenticity because of people's invested memories. But here we have an example of a, not just a suburb, but a suburb that's, you know, it's, it's a relatively short period of time over which this um, place is, uh, you know, uh, seeped into to people's memories, not just the people who work and live there, but obviously um, people recognizing it from outside. So the, the role of, you know, attachment to place, memory, 
um, memories can be as you know powerful as the real thing, as it were. I think this is a uh, Borges's. Uh, point the Argentinian, you know, uh, fiction writer that you know memory is 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 really really important uh, in in urban affairs. So, and not something we associate with new suburbs. You know, they're inauthentic. They haven't been around long enough. But you know that authenticity can be can be derived pretty quickly. More questions, comments. Sorry, I, I, can I just ask one then? Sorry to, uh, sorry to abuse my kind of co-chair role. Um, thanks, Sanan and everybody else. I, I was really ca caught by that picture of the juxtaposition between, you know, that older kind of lower, you know, lower kind of density suburban uh, morphology, and then that kind of high-rise urban morphology, kind of, you know cheek by jowl with one another. And it speaks to this, I, I think for me, at least in morphological terms, it speaks to uh, kind of both a landscape uh, that uh, Walter kindly raised earlier on in his one. But I'm just wondering about the kind of the, um, I suppose the, the brutalness and the brutopian dimensions of this creation that's coming. So it's simultaneously brutal and it's simultaneously utopianistic. Uh, that's being planned or envisioned there. Would you like to maybe just comment on, you know, where we're going with the Red Steel City, with those plans? In fact, uh, when we went there just very recently, uh, the, the photo the shows was, uh, was taken, uh, maybe not, not this time, uh, the, the, we can see a lot of uh, constructions going on around the, the, the Red uh, Steel City. And you will see a lot of high rises, uh, Around this, uh, just uh, you know, around around uh, this red brick, brick city, and they trying to uh, turn this original the red steel city into a commercial center. Uh, they trying to reserve the the, the brick the brick housing and turn it into to as a business uh, as a commercial a commercial center. So all these real estate has been already going on around this place. It's actually feeling not well because when you went there, you see uh, the high rise around this red brick <laughs> a housing. But it's yeah, this is the real thing is going on now because the 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 uh, the Qingshan district or the place if they you know trying to develop itself, it has relied on the land finance or to do you know to 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 develop. <laughs> it's sort of a Chinese city's character, yeah. <laughs> 